All right, so I've transitioned my shell to the body, to the kind of front plate of the shell, worked on the coloring of the arm a little bit. There's a little bit of erasing that still needs to happen there. And then there's a lot of transitioning that has to do with the tail. Always lots to be done, but knowing that I could also use clone stamp to help with some of those techniques. The hands I haven't worked on at all from the eagle. So, but let's, let's get that tail where we want it. So I've got the tail reference. I pushed out the leg a little bit. Or maybe I was going to, let's see. There it is. So remember you can always warp and transform your elements to work as well. You don't have to accept them as they are. And when I warp, it's like rolling cookie dough. You kind of push and pull. So I want it to line up with that foot and that foot, but I want the hips to be bigger. So I'm turning the squirrel reference almost into more like a bear shape. And that gives me some nice overlap for the tail. Because I want to erase at 100% the stuff that's covering up the tail. I'm not trying to get a perfect cutout yet. I'm just getting rid of those hard edges. A 100% soft eraser. The other layer that's covering up the tail in a way I might not want it to is this one. So let's turn that off for the moment. Start thinking about how to transition these together. Oh, I erased a little too much. That's what my history is for. There we go, I'll scallop it a little bit. It's gonna be the top of the tail. That hard edge. All right, for the tail. I'm just going to be kind of bold here. I have a three pixel feather on my lasso. And I'm just going to cut it out. Because it's underwater, it's a little vague in its shape anyway. So cutting it will help tighten its solidity. Especially on the bottom here, where you have a kind of a weird reflected shadow. Well, maybe that's helpful though. Right. And it might be necessary to turn off your sketch so you can see the, the real edges. 
Okay, now I can work on the color of the tail using direct adjustments. Just use these same tricks over and over, but always with different ends in mind. I'm going to definitely limit the highlights. Color balance. There's some interesting subtle colors in the tail I don't want to lose. But I also want it to feel a little bit more solid. So I can push that saturation a little bit and then darken it. It feels a little bit more like it's lit by natural light. Color change like a gecko. Pretty fun. Okay. Now I'm going to do some direct burning on the bottom edge. Give that some weight. And I'm going to burn the top too because I need to kind of cut this out to look more like believable ridges. See where it gets a little funky. See if this works. And then on each ridge, just like the spikes here, I can go with a really strong dodge. I'm going to dodge the midtones really strong with a pretty sharp, like a 70% hardness, small brush. even smaller, even sharper. I want to tighten this up. Now what I'm doing is working, but it's too strong. Well, maybe it's not too strong. We'll see. I could do this on a duplicate. It would You'd probably be smarter to do it on a duplicate. But I'm kind of creating teeth out of what's already there. Now there, you see, it's easy to, to go too far. And I went to pure white, so be careful of that. And with the harder edge, you can see all the slight overlaps you get. So let me soften it a little bit. Because even though you can't really see it on screen very easily, nope, I don't need it at the end there. When you print this out at full resolution, you will see these kind of details. And that's going to help bring that ridge into the rest of the body. Okay. Back to clone stamp, my old friend. So far it's transitioning here and here. Now I'm going to use it to transition the tail a little bit. I'm going to take the clone stamp tool Nice and big, nice and soft edged, about 43% opacity. And I'm going to steal some of these scales. And I'm going to work them on down the tail. I can use it to soften that transition. I can even take some of the darker scales. Bring that in where it goes into shadow. Of 
Clone stamp has the advantage of changing the color and the texture to match because you're just layering one surface over another. So if I want the shadow, I can just paint it in where I want the shadow. And because it's on its own layer, I can always erase it out. I'm not harming the actual pixels that it comes from. Now it does get overused professionally, clone stamp, and it can get abused because if you use it just a ton, you get all these kind of copy pasty things happening. And so that's why I like to use it at lower opacities to make sure everything always looks distinct. And it's good to zoom in a little bit so you don't lose too much pixel definition because as you're overlapping, it can make things blurrier and blurrier. but you can always erase away as long as you're doing clone stamp on its own layer. You're not stuck. Just another tool we have. I think an incredibly helpful one. Okay, let's work on these hands. And then we'll merge the head and then we'll clean up around the whole body and then we'll be done. So these hands were on different layers, the arms there. That's one in Talon. Other one I think is helped. There we go. So it's this one. I'll mark them yellow. The yellow hands. And this one. So just like the feet, if I want to move those both onto the same layer so I can do the same adjustments to them, I select them both by holding down Command. And then I can do layer merge layers. So it puts both on one layer. They're a little blurry just because it's from this high speed photo of this eagle. So let me try using the sharpen tool just to bring a little bit more definition to the edges. Because I really like the position of these. I can do that before I adjust the colors because this is changing the contrast just like levels would, but it's just doing it where it detects edges. Have that leather strap around that one claw. And then this is a good example of a green screen. That makes it incredibly easy to use with a contiguous magic wand and to just erase. That's why green screens are so helpful. And the only leftovers you get are a little bit of reflected green sometimes, which can be adjusted in color balance. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the green screen because it was right up against the eagle's body. But I've got the, the feather of three pixels on my on my lasso there. So if I delete that away, it can work. But more I'm interested in matching this to the, 